Welcome to Philosophy MT. In this discussion, we will journey into logic, unraveling some of its intricacies. Together, we will delve into propositional logic, the study of elementary propositions and their logical relationships. We'll also touch upon the notions of assertions, virtual bilocation, virtual bitemperation, complex propositions, and logical junctures. Join me as we navigate this intellectual landscape, gaining a deeper understanding of these fundamental principles. Propositional logic is like the backbone of a decision-making process. Think about making plans with your friends, you might say, if it's sunny, proposition P, and the park is open, proposition Q, then we will go for a picnic, a new proposition we could call R. In this scenario, the statement, we will go for a picnic, R, is only true if both, it's sunny, P, and the park is open, Q, are true. If either of these conditions aren't met, then the whole proposition, R, is not true, and you probably need a new plan for your day. Also, you can negate these propositions. Let's say it turns out it's not sunny. In the language of propositional logic, we'd express this as not P. Propositional logic is all about dealing with such true or false statements, or propositions, combining them using logical connectors like and, or, and not, and understanding what the larger truth is, when these smaller truths are put together. This kind of reasoning is critical in computer science, philosophy, law, and many other fields. In this feature, we'll be diving into an overview of propositional logic, taking a close look at both elementary and complex propositions, and unpacking the significance of logical junctures. From the basics to the more intricate layers, we're set to embark on a journey through the fascinating world of logic. If you find value in our content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions. If there's a specific topic you'd like us to cover, don't hesitate to leave a comment. We're always open to your suggestions. And remember, there's plenty more philosophy to explore over at philosophymt.com. Stay curious, stay philosophical, and as always, thank you for your support. Propositional logic. Propositional logic, also known as sentential logic, is a branch of formal logic that deals with the relationships and operations between statements, which are called propositions. A proposition is simply a statement, or a claim, that can be either true or false. Propositional logic focuses on studying the ways in which these propositions can be combined and manipulated using logical operators, such as and, or, and not. These operators allow us to form compound propositions by connecting multiple individual propositions. For example, let's say we have two propositions, it is raining outside and I have an umbrella. We can use the logical operator and to combine these propositions into a compound proposition, it is raining outside and I have an umbrella. Propositional logic provides a systematic way to analyze and reason about the truth values of compound propositions based on the truth values of their component propositions. It allows us to determine when a compound proposition is true or false, based on the logical relationships between the individual propositions and the logical operators used. In other words, propositional logic is a way of studying and understanding the logical relationships and operations between simple statements or propositions, helping us make sense of how these statements combine and influence the truth values of compound propositions. Elementary propositions. Elementary propositions are the basic building blocks of propositional logic. We can think of elementary propositions as simple statements or claims that can be either true or false. These propositions represent the most fundamental units of information that we can analyze and reason about. An elementary proposition can be as straightforward as stating a fact or making a simple assertion. For example, the sun is shining or London is the capital of England can be considered elementary propositions. Now let's discuss the concepts of assertions, virtual bilocation, and virtual bitemperation in logic. Assertions. In logic, an assertion is a statement or a proposition that is claimed to be true. It is a way of expressing a fact or making a confident declaration about something. 
Assertions are often used as the basis for logical reasoning and analysis. For example, if we assert the proposition all cats have tails, we are implying that this proposition is true. 2. Virtual bilocation. Virtual bilocation refers to an assertion about an event or situation that is happening in one place and is being witnessed by someone who communicates what is happening in real time to someone else. The receiver of this communication accepts the assertion as true and mentally appropriates it, making them virtually located in that place and virtually experiencing the same event. For example, imagine a live sports match. Person A is present at the stadium and witnesses a thrilling goal being scored. They immediately call person B and enthusiastically describe the goal as it happens. Person B, who is not physically at the stadium, accepts the assertion as true and imagines themselves being virtually located at the stadium, experiencing the excitement of the goal, despite not actually being there. 3. Virtual bitemperation. Virtual bitemperation involves an assertion about an event that has been witnessed by person A at a specific time, and is being recounted to person B, or even to person A themselves, at a different time period. When the receiver of the assertion accepts it as true, they mentally transport themselves back to the time of the event, experiencing it virtually, even though they are not situated in that actual moment when the event occurred. For instance, let's consider a historical event like the moon landing in 1969. Let's say Buzz Aldrin, as person A who was present at the time, shares their first-hand account of witnessing the landing to person B in the present day. Person B, upon accepting the assertion as true, mentally transports themselves back to the moment of the moon landing, experiencing it virtually in their imagination, even though they were not physically present during the actual event. To summarize, elementary propositions are simple statements or claims that can be true or false. Assertions are confident declarations or factual statements. Both virtual bilocation and virtual bitemperation assertions allow individuals to mentally transport themselves to different locations or time periods based on the assertions they accept as true, providing a way to experience events substitutionally and engage in imaginative understanding. These concepts allow us to reason about propositions across various scenarios and timeframes in logic. Complex propositions. Complex propositions are compound statements or claims that are formed by combining multiple elementary propositions, using logical operators such as and, or, and not. These logical operators, or logical junctors, allow us to connect simple propositions and create more intricate statements. To understand complex propositions, let's have a look at six logical junctors. 1. The negator, or not operator. The negator is used to negate a proposition, essentially flipping its truth value. For example, if we have the elementary proposition, it is sunny, we can apply the not operator to create the complex proposition, it is not sunny. In this case, the complex proposition, it is not sunny, is true if the elementary proposition, it is sunny, is not true. 2. The conjunctor, or, and, operator. When we use the conjunctor, it means that both propositions being connected must be true, for the complex proposition to be true. For example, if we have the elementary propositions, it is raining outside, and, I have an umbrella, we can combine them with the, and, operator to create the complex proposition, it is raining outside and I have an umbrella. In this case, our complex proposition, or complex statement, is true only if both elementary propositions are true, that is, if it's both raining, and I have an umbrella. Other linguistic expressions that function the same as an adjunctor include, but, while, each one, and, both. 3. The, adjunctor. A statement with an adjunctor can be understood as an, or, statement. There are several ways of saying this, such as, 1. Either A, or B, or both, 2. Some, and 3. At least 1. The adjunctor joins two propositions in a complex proposition that's true if, at least, one of the elementary propositions is true. Let's take an example. Imagine John, a parent of two young children, Jack and Jill. If only one child wanted to go to the playground, 
John would accompany him or her while the other stay at home. However, John would also be going if both of them wanted to go, A, or B, or both. 4. The disjunctor, or one and only one. The disjunctor is similar to the adjunctor, in that it is true if either proposition is true. However, unlike the adjunctor, it will give a false result if both propositions are true. Imagine you're at the bar, with only one drink voucher to choose between tea or coffee. You can choose either one, but you can't have both. This is how the disjunctor works. One and only one. Other ways of expressing it are either A or B. A or B, but not both. And precisely one. 5. The subjunctor, or if, then. The subjunctor is a conditional operator, which means that, when a condition is met, it will lead to some specific result. It combines elementary propositions by making one a consequence of the other. The most common linguistic expression of the subjunctor would be, if, something, then, something else. The effect, or consequence, is called the consequent. The cause is called the antecedent. Therefore, based on an antecedent A, we will get a consequent B. Or, in other words, if A, then B. A subjunction is false only when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Let's illustrate this with an example. Let's say A stands for, it's raining. Let's also say B stands for, the ground is wet. Using the subjunctor, we can say, if it's raining, then the ground is wet, A subjunctor B. There are four scenarios for the truth values of A and B. 1. A is true and B is true. 2. A is true and B is false. 3. A is false and B is true. And 4. A is false and B is false. These four scenarios cover all the possible combinations. We can also display these scenarios in what is called a truth table, with our results for each scenario, or line, on the right side. In this particular truth table, in each of the four scenarios, A is the antecedent and B is the consequent. Let's trace back a couple of steps, that a subjunction is false only when the antecedent is true, and the consequent is false. Let's look at the truth table line by line. On line 1, if it's raining is true and the ground is wet is true, then we have no conflict, no contradiction. It's raining, therefore the ground is wet. Let's skip line 2 for now. On line 3, if it's raining is false, it means it's not raining. However, B is true, therefore the ground is wet. This may seem contradictory at first, but there could be other causes leading to the wetness of the ground, such as a sprinkler system, a hose, or an underground water source which is independent of rain. It follows, then, that there is no conflict or contradiction on line 3, either. On line 4, A is false, and B is also false. It's not raining, and the ground is not wet. No contradiction, and therefore the truth value is true. Turning our attention to line 2, A is true, and B is false. It's raining, but the ground is not wet. It can't be, if it rains, then the ground gets wet. Line 2 is, therefore, contradictory, so it gives a false truth value. Like we said earlier, a subjunction is false only when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. 6. The bisubjunctor, or if, with two f's. Like the subjunctor, the bisubjunctor also is a conditional operator. However, in this case, it gives a true result only when the two propositions have the same truth value, that is, when both A and B are either true or false at the same time. When A and B hold different values, the bisubjunctor will give a false truth value. Let's take the following example. Let A stand for a triangle has three equal sides and B stand for a triangle has three equal angles. Since no triangle can exist that doesn't have both at the same time, our truth table for the bisubjunctor will only give a true value either when A and B are both true, 
or when A and B are both false. That is, when our complex statement is either, a triangle has three equal sides if it has three equal angles, or, a triangle doesn't have three equal sides if it doesn't have three equal angles. By using these logical operators and combining elementary propositions, we can create more intricate and nuanced statements that capture complex relationships and conditions. Complex propositions provide a way to express more sophisticated ideas and arguments, based on the logical connections between elementary statements. That brings us to the end of today's feature. In our next installment, we'll delve deeper, exploring the intricacies of truth tables and logical junctors, also known as operators. Stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe, to make sure you don't miss out. Until then, keep your minds open and your questions ready. This is Philosophy MT.